Hey everybody. We live. We live. Is it this guy on this channel doing things with these people. That's right. Welcome to Laughing Dragon Inn with your friend Ramrod Dude and Soup and Marty and Andy. Oh, these poor souls. They've brought me into their world. <laughs> what have we done? Hey. <laughs> Today, we're going to be playing Beyond the Wall, one of my favoritest games ever. It's what some people call a zero prep game, because we just bring ourselves, and we roll some dice, and we create characters, and we create a village, and thank you Flatland Games for giving us this really cool, awesome system that we're going to explore over the next, I don't know, seven weeks or so. And today is going to be character creation and village creation. And it's going to lead to our first adventure next week. And then we're going to build a world and we're going to take a romp around that world. And it's going to be great fun. So keep joining us. In the meantime, I've got Soup. I've got Andy. I've got Marty. We've got Roll20 up. And thank you, Inkwell Ideas, for your little character art. We played a private game of Beyond the Wall a number of weeks back and we didn't have art assets. And we. <laughs> chaotically drew all over the map and oh, yeah. it was still fun but it was what you might expect so <laughs> we're, we're going to try to upgrade our visuals we're going to try to be a little more you know professional like here today laughing dragon in production brings you beyond the wall and other adventures yeah, nice idea. all right so the game is 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 that it's zero prep um <clears throat> We've got a series of playbooks that the game gives us. Um, they're all named different things like um, the self-taught mage or the untested thief. And so I'm just going to ask for us to begin that we have a volunteer to be the starting player. And that starting player is going to pick what they want their playbook to be. And the only rule with playbook selection is that once you pick a playbook, nobody else can pick that playbook. But we've got 40 some of them <laughs> so i'm hoping that's not going to be an issue for anybody <laughs> um and then we're going to go through the character creation process and the only rule for character creation process is that we're going to roll on a series of tables and we're going to fill in some narrative around it and it's going to build out our characters and it's going to build out the village that they grew up in that they live in and that they're going to adventure in for their first adventure and um the one rule is that, so there's two rules. One, let it ride, right? So whatever we come up with within, for the narrative, we don't go back and change. And two, for any one table, if whatever you roll is not what you would like, and you would just like to pick something from that table, you can do that once on any given table. Uh, we've all got our character sheets online on roll 20. Um, the only thing outside of the playbooks that you'll have to select from is a trait, a starting trait for your character. You'll see in your journals that there's a traits section. So that's it. I mean, let's just have some fun. What do we say? All right. Yes. <clears throat> no. Who would Wait, like to no. volunteer yes. to be? <laughs> <laughs> Who would like to volunteer to be my starting player or victim? Is it? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, cleverly. We narrowed down our top five playbooks each, although it occurs to me now we probably should have made it six and then rolled procedurally for that as well. Oh. But, no um, mm. but uh, we're not that smart. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, re I have one playbook that I want to play. So if there's nothing uh -oh. prohibitive, I'm. Uh -oh. And I have no idea what I'm doing. So let me go first. Uh huh. Okay. First that good to me. <laughs> let me Marty. Actually... Up what playbook book. would you like to play, Marty? Uh, what is it? The Nobleman's Wild Daughter. Oh, this, oh. This, that's all this I've is, ever wanted. This is the most Marty playbook of all time. Yeah, <laughs> it uh, just. Yeah. yeah, when I say when I came to narrow it down to, to my top five, I said The Nobleman's Wild Daughter five times. <laughs> yeah, uh, I figured it was between that and The Lord's Secret. I <laughs> that was that's on my list. That's next time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this uh, automatically adds a nobility <laughs> aspect to the game, right? You were saying before the stream. That's right. So you've chosen uh, <clears throat> a noble playbook, which uh, will add 
uh, some type of manor house or keep or, you know, the presence of a noble family uh, within the village. So uh, as we get into the roles of the tables, we'll, uh, we'll have to figure out who that family is. And I think. What do they like, live in? And, you know, we'll have to add all of that to the map. So I feel like the, the selection of Nobleman's Wild Dirt da- Daughter has turned the tables on me, and now I'm the victim. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because you haven't done that yet, have you? You haven't played with noble nobility yet no i played um, that playbook last time oh, okay. we did in a private game last time okay. but it's you know yeah mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay cool yeah i'm um, not full locked in here with you <laughs> you're locked in here with me all right so marty you're going to be our starting player with the nobleman's wild daughter okay uh, who wants to be who wants to be the second player choose their playbook now that you have more information to go from you know a wild daughter is in play. <laughs> Which of the two souls are brave enough to step forward and make their selection? I'm flexible, so I'll go last. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. I see. I see so how gentlemanly it is. of you. I'm, I'm being a good person. <laughs> Andy the player coming out. I'm not I see how that is. <laughs> being at all indecisive. No, I'll go second if you want me to, CC, but I... No, I've actually narrowed mine down to okay. my top one. Okay. Uh, I want to play the adventurous trader. Oh, cool. The adventurous trader. Okay. I was <clears throat> I was interested by that playbook because it came in its own little supplement about, you know, networking between towns and so I don't know if it'll come into play more as we build out the world in future sessions or what, but I'm interested to see what comes up during the rolls of the table for adventurous trader. Awesome. All right, cool. So we've got a nobleman's wild daughter, an adventurous trader. You are moving. Trader with a D, not with a T. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Although. I was about to say, should we distinguish? We'll find out. Mm -hmm. Who knows? I like both. I like the idea of an adventurous traitor. Like, (laughs) I still do. I still love adventure, but I will betray you. Why are you on the team again? (laughs) I just like to get out. Okay, well, okay, so that means, hold on, let me look at something real fast. It's like a Bandit Keith situation where it's like, he's clearly cheating. His, his name is Bandit. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to presume. Okay, so there's a, okay, there's a warrior and a rogue. So mm-hmm. should I be a wizard or a mage or a magic user? What is it? In the, it's mage. Yeah, this game has three three core classes, Mage, Rogue, and Warrior, although some of the playbooks are multi-class between the three. Yeah, because I was looking at... I was looking at... I had narrowed it down to a couple. Um, one of them was a Rogue, so I just want to play that one. One of them was a Rogue Mage, and then the other one's just a Mage. So... What oh, Rogue mm, Mage? Decisions, decisions. Because, like, can't your trait also add... To it. Let's see. Well, the the problem with the rogue mage I liked was they can only learn cantrips. So if we hmm. need like someone to heal or something like that, I'm not going to be helpful. Sure. I think who I who needs a healer. I well, that's certainly this game's old. And we're gonna die. We have like d6 hit points. Mm. Yeah. Can um, we reroll? <laughs> I think I'm going to be the witch's prentice. So you're saying there's a witch. There's a witch. <laughs> and I'm their apprentice. Okay. All right. My, Fantastic. My other playbook also would have said there was a witch because it was the assistant beast keeper who works for the witch. <laughs> so, but I think I will be their proper apprentice. Fantastic. All right. So we've got uh, two straight villagers and one from the nobility. Uh, so we'll have to figure out. How those dynamics come into play but to start that marty since you're the starting player okay. you get to tell us all about the nobleman's wild wild daughter so if you would read us a little bit of the narrative on page one of your playbook about who the nobleman's wild daughter is what she might be like and then we can take a roll on your first table and it's i I know in one of the playbooks, it actually did establish what my family does. It looks like that might be another of the noble people that I was looking at, though, because... Mm-hmm. But this does uh, include a table on why and how I'm involved with 
the other PCs. So, yes, uh, you were never quiet and demure, as some would have wished you to be. You grew up on tales of heroes, mighty deeds, and great battles. You learned the ways of war in secret and can now best any lad in the castle. You are quick and tough. Your dexterity and constitution begin at 10, and all your other ability scores begin at 8. Okay. And then, uh, my first table is what was my childhood like. But first, let me fill in my... So, yeah, so go ahead and, and make... Uh, you can make the changes on the fly as they tell you to change your ability scores. So Dexing high dex, con. high con to start. The first three tables for everybody will essentially be what was your childhood like. So these okay. first three tables will be you know, similar for, for all players. Oh, it's a D12. It's a D12. So how did your noble family earn its name is the first table. Oh, uh, Marty, do you want to are... roll in chat or do you want to use dice? Oh, that's right. That's right. <clears throat> um, yes, I will roll in chat. Um, let's see. Well, this... All right, so this is... Hold on. I'm very good at games, I promise. All right, because my first one says, "What was my childhood like?" But oh, so the yeah, the, and then the table the table has the title in in the table itself. If you take a look. At the yeah. Program. So, what was the childhood like? It what was oh, your childhood then, like? Is like the category of these. The ah, there tables. it is. There it is. Okay. Yeah. All right. I thought I had seen that. Okay. So one d twelve. What did I get? <laughs> you got a twelve. You got a twelve. Oh, fantastic. Um having one of the oldest names in the land and staying out of affairs that don't concern them. Excellent. Oh, wow. <laughs> all right. So it looks like you've got a bunch of stat increases there. Yeah. Plus um, one strength, plus one dex, plus one int, plus one whiz, plus one... Oh, boy. Just... Wow. It's good and, to be noble. Uh, yeah. All right, Marty. We've got to talk about your family name. I've got all kinds of questions now. Yeah, so yeah. first of all, I have to ask, you rolled a 12. Is that 12 the roll that you want to keep? Oh, I, uh, yeah, I think so. Um, I like that. I, th I think that means the town's probably named after my family, or at least some antecedent. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Let's see, what were the rest of them, though? Yeah, this is fine. I think, you know, McClayock's Landing or whatever the heck, you know, like, this is where... You know, me great grandpap thought the view was good, and there was plenty timber or something. And now, okay, do do you have an idea for the name for the noble family? Uh, I happen to have some oh. random tables to roll on. <laughs> well, then let's 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 let it ride uh, well, for sure. I got a I got a d six table here that okay. has some names on it. If you want to, let's do it. Want to roll a d6 for me? Oh, I will do so. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, da, 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 da. A three. Oh, how about Kirkwall? Kirkwall it is. And apparently we've just named our village the village of Kirkwall. Yes. Kirkwall's landing. Beyond the Kirkwall. Yeah, does this mean we're all mice? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the city in Dragon Age? Isn't that Kirkwall? Uh... Who is it? Might be Kirkwall too. Well, our Kirkwall's a lot cooler. That's what we're right. going to find out. Also, probably That's a lot right. smaller. So <laughs> what? So the Kirkwall family—they settle. The, the village of Kirkwall comes about, and they apparently like staying out of affairs that don't concern them. What? Mm -hmm. What kind of affairs did they stay out of? Like, what's what's the happenings in the area, in the region that uh, they were like, no, nope, we're going to go over here and we're going to start our own little village. This will be our place. Well, I have to imagine that we pleased whatever greater lord or king of the land enough to be gifted. You know, hey, that's mm. yours. You know, whatever you can walk around in a day or whatever. Uh, and yeah, as far as any game of houses or anything like that, we're just kind of like, no thanks. We're kind of decidedly neutral on all greater affairs of the mm. land. Um, so they just wanted to stay out of politics. Yeah, time. yeah. I imagine my... You know, again, my, my great granddad or whoever secured it probably just did some otherwise very earthly favor for a lord or or king and and never really set themselves too much to the noble life itself. So we just kind of like, them's their business, this is our business. It, is it, it who's, who's the head of the household now? 
Um, let's see. I usually have mommy issues. It's well known, but I think uh, I should have daddy issues this time. In fact, I think it even comes up later that uh, if I'm that my father is in some full throated support. I, I think Cece, you already pointed out this is full on Merida anyway. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's say it's uh, my father. Um, but that his mother is still around and kind of holding on to the the kind of... So, uh, so like a matriarch type of... Yeah, yeah. But, you know, she mostly sits in her study and and, and grumbles about the way we're doing things these days. <laughs> but like a meddlesome queen mother kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's just like, well, it's not how I did it, but okay. Very cool. <laughs> All right, so there's a little symbol next to the table in your playbook. It looks like a little map scroll. That means that hmm. you've got to add something to the map based on the narrative that we came up with. So oh, okay. I think it's up to you what you want to add. It could be anything according to the narrative. It could be something outside the narrative, and we can make up new narrative for it. But one of the things we know we have to add probably is, like, wherever the noble family is sort of yes. living. I, I, I think... I feel very much my hand is forced to put the manor house or, or what have you. Kirkwall um, Keep. <laughs> Kirkwall Kirk Keep. Yep. Um, let's see. And so you can you can do that, and you can feel free to manipulate the map. The only thing that's on the map is that uh, in beyond the wall, the inn always starts at sort of the center of the village. Okay. So, but you can put stuff around that wherever you want. Let's see. And while you're doing that, we can move on to soup. Oh, excellent. Sorry, the adventurous no. traitor. Oh, you... Traitor. Sorry. <laughs> How do you add little pictures? Oh, I think uh, all of the icons, I tried to open up for control to everybody. So you can just grab them and drag oh, them I see. around. Sorry. My chat window was covering that bar. I got it. Now. Oh. <laughs> so, okay. Thank you. Yep. Did I do it? Yeah, I think mm -hmm. so. Yep. Can everybody yep. see that? Okay. Oh, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> And then if you, I don't know, if you want to, you know, Marty, it's up to you. We're learning this for the first time using this and the icons and stuff. But there should be like a little, you can like draw stuff. Like if you want to draw roads or terrain or put text and name the different things that you drag onto the map. I tried to put it for the end, but it ended up being really small. I did. <laughs> so. I think, I believe I named Kirkwall Keep, but okay, I don't is... know if that's showing up or not. This this is is I can see it on my laptop, but I can't see it on my desktop for some reason. Hmm. And I'm gonna put. Oh wait. Oh, wait Are you going... just too zoomed I'm, in on your I'm, desktop? I'm too zoomed in. <laughs> uh, yes, I I had that problem. I'm figuring it out. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> okay, that's better. Hey, we're, we're all learning. Here. It's yeah. fine. We are all learning. <laughs> yeah, I usually zoom up to like thirty percent to get all of it. Yep. Oh, I wish there was a way to move these sort of out of the way. Okay, so you want me to go then? Yeah, if we want to move on to the adventurous trader. Okie dokie. Uh, let's see. If you want to read us uh, all the little blurb soup about your, your trader, and uh, we'll get into your tables. All right. Uh, you always dreamed of taking on or taking to the road, selling your wares and making your fortune. Recently, you actually managed to come into the possession of some goods, a cart, and a trusty mule. With a helpful ally by your side, your plan is to take to the road, help the village, and become a wealthy merchant. You are savvy and charming. Your intelligence and charisma begin at 10, and all your other ability scores begin at 8. And then my first chart for what was your childhood like is what did your parents do in the village? What did you learn from them? Cool. Let's 12 see. roll it is. I got an eight. Um, you worked the loom, cutting and twisting as the fates. Mm -hmm. Would you like to keep that roll? Yeah, I'll take, I'll keep that roll. Cutting and twisting the fates. It's an interesting way to put it. <laughs> yeah, I like it. <laughs> right, so uh, you have a family of weavers. Mm -hmm. And uh, does this play? Does this play into your trade as a merchant? Are you a merchant of the 
of the loomed goods, <laughs> or are you uh, are you are you bucking the family trend? Uh, I think that I would go with the family trend to kind of give myself the best kind of leg up in this world that I can. I'm already kind of like setting off on my own by wanting to be like a traveling trader. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe I'm taking like the the family goods and like. But we can be so much more than this tiny village of Kirkwall. We could go beyond the Kirkwall. Mm, okay. All right, cool. Uh, you have an ally that's a mule. I want to know yeah. all about the mule. <laughs> um, let's see. My mule. Or you could roll a random name for the mule. <gasps> yes. Okay. I've got, a, I've got a D20 list of both female and male names, if you'd like to choose. Um, I want a lady mule. Lady mule, okay. I got a 13. 13. Jocelyn. Oh, Jocelyn. Jocelyn the mule. Yeah, so Jocelyn... Let's see. It says that I actually managed to come into position. I feel like it's, like... You know when you're a kid and your parents give you like an allowance and so you're like saving up $10 at a time for a portable CD player or whatever? Totally relatable story for all those young kids out there. Um. Topical. <laughs> yeah. That's what I like about it the most. <laughs> so I feel like Jocelyn has been like that, like my parents have been slowly like giving me an allowance and I've been like I've had my eyes on Jocelyn for a long time. Does that mean Jocelyn is sad and old? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> As all good mules are. Okay. Um, I want to know more about how working the loom can cut and twist the fates. What's that all about? Is it like mm. a... Is it like a, you know, almost like a tarot reading type of thing? Or is it... Uh, yeah, I, 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 what 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 is that? What does that entail? Hmm. I kind of am thinking along the lines of something like um maybe like like Yeah, maybe there's a there's a history in my family that's kind of passed down through the women that um they do kind of like fortune reading. Um, as well as weaving. So these are okay. kind of two traditions that have been passed down hand in hand through the family line. Yeah. Interesting. So the witch is going to love that. <laughs> is that is that something that you've picked up along the way? Do you think? Or you're yeah, sure I think you're I think so? it it's just been something that I've done since a child. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's just what we all do. Oh. All right, Soup. Looks like you've got a little map icon as well. If you'd like to add some things to the map. Okay, like let's maybe see. Maybe where all this looming is going down. Or maybe. anything else. Feel free to make some changes. Let's and in the meantime, see. we'll move on to the Witch's Prentice, Andy. That's me. Okay. Time to give us a little bit of info as to uh, what okay. the Witch's Prentice is all about. Uh, Every great mage was a student once. Some say the true heart of magic is the simple, practical work of the village witch. Your village, like many, had its own crone who tended the sick and blessed the fields. She chose you as her apprentice. Uh, You are naturally intelligent and thoughtful. Your intelligence and wisdom begin at 10, and all other ability scores begin at 8. What was your childhood like? All right, so what did your parents do in the village, and what did you learn from them? Which is Prentice. Uh, my father was an outcast, rightfully or not. Would you like to keep that role, or do you yeah, want to change it? I think that fits. Okay. Wow. So, all right, there's, there's got to be a whole story there. Lots of questions. Your father was an outcast. What went down in the village? Something with the nobility, perhaps? I don't want to infer anything, but you've got you've got noble folk about. 
noble folk that don't like politics. <laughs> it's true. Much politicking in yeah. your family, perhaps, Andy? <laughs> So, yeah, I'm trying to... I, I do like the idea of uh, it being a crime against the nobles. But if they don't like politicking, would it be... Yeah, would they care, like, if it was, like, someone protesting? Or would they care if, like, someone was hunting on their land or something like that? You know, how can't kill a stag on the... A deer on the lord's land. Like, would they care about, like, poachers? Uh, well, it says rightfully or not, so there could be some gray area. Yeah, perhaps they saw it as poaching, and perhaps it wasn't. I I think it's likely like if you took, or, or if your your father took a side in whatever broader. I know we're supposed to focus on the village, but whatever broader politics of the land, uh, again, rightfully or not, like you know whether or not they put a uh, a killery sign in front of their house, or uh, you know just flew some old colors that is just like, well, that's an insult. <laughs> um, the, the lord of the land wanted to build a wall and your family mm -hmm. was against it Andy. <laughs> just absolutely and no wall the nobles were like god we just don't want to take sides here please don't get involved just, with this can we so, just not everything's political like can we just all just can you, can you just take the sign that says say no to wawa down I just like if, if they're either going to develop it or not What do you think? Does it? I mean, do we just want it to be something generic like that in general? Like, your father's just, he gets a little bit too involved in whatever the happenings in the region are, and the nobles just don't like yeah, that. Yeah, he's so. just a busybody, and they were like, yeah, he's just to like, <laughs> why do you, why? Why do you keep bringing attention to us? We purposefully set up this place to get away from that kind of thing, and you, you just keep bringing it up. Formed a peasants' union. I feel like we gotta give, <laughs> I feel like we have to give your father a name now, though. Instead of just calling him your father, you wanna um, you wanna think of a name or roll on the roll on the random table of I'll, names. I'll that roll I on the have. random table of names. What, what a d twenty, please, sir. D twenty. Seventeen. Uh, Silas. Okay. S I L A S. Silas. I like Silas. Silas the busybody. So perhaps if he had to leave town and he was, he pleaded with the witch to please take, take my daughter. Oh, okay. All right. So That's the witch is actually thinking. taking care of you. Yeah, okay. but I think there All is right. a question later of why did the witch pick me, so. Uh, yeah, we'll have, to, we'll have to talk about the witch at some point, too. Yeah. But, uh, okay. Uh, That's and pretty I good. Plus two ints, plus one whiz, plus one con, and survival. Mm. yes and you also have a map icon there andy yes. so you can uh feel free to uh mess around with the map and uh drag in what you feel is whatever you want to add maybe it's where the witch lived or okay. anything else where the wall's being built <laughs> whatever you want to add <laughs> Um, can somebody actually move the tokens for me? It's not like you might touch screen. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, what do you? Sorry, that's Marty's. What do you? What do you want to move? Oh, man. Uh, the one that's right above the one that Marty just moved that had the um, the little like, village house. The yeah, the little house with just the outbuilding. It, yeah, if you could put it like nearish to the inn. Like thereish. Sure. Okay. Uh, okay. Which one did you want? This one or oh, yeah, either maybe. one is fine. Uh, what are you guys weavers? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna pick. This is the witch's house. I'm gonna put it way, way up the opposite order corner of I the like, Lord's house. I like being mes. Oh, okay. I like being mesmerized. <laughs> but, but the witch. Oh, okay. Yeah, the witch has got like a. Like a little Different architecture style and everything. Yeah, like it's it's stop zooming in out. It's older than the probably the rest of the the village, and they have a little uh, yeah. garden. Yeah, cool. Okay, uh, Marty, we'll come back to you then. Uh, we're okay. going to continue to learn about the nobleman's wild daughter. 
and take a look at your second table. Okay, so having some window juggling here. Nope, that's not it. Oh, right. I have to go over here. And then, all right. So, second one, page one. How did I distinguish myself as a child? And that's a D8. Mm. Oh, boy. All right. So, what did that show up as? A five. five. Okay. Your empathy made you a sought after confidant. Let's see. Mm, would you like to keep that role? Let me look at the other ones real quick. I do like broadly playing kind of empaths and empathic characters. It just feels a little, I don't know, a little weak tea to me. Let me just look at the second page real quick to see if there's anything else. I'm like, no, I definitely want to reserve my... Oh, <laughs> my choice for for something that could go wrong or something. Um, I mean, can anything go wrong? We're just creating characters, Mark. It is true. It what is could true. possibly go wrong in a session zero like atmosphere? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. You can't die in character creation. It's not trap. Can you? <laughs> it, it's not paranoia. Yeah. Um, let's see. And then it just goes on to say that I learned to fight from something else. All right. So it's not necessary to get it on page one that I. That I'm some kind of scrappy young lass here. So let me see. My empathy made me a sought after confident confidant. I think that's that that's perfectly acceptable. So let's see. That gives me plus two whiz and plus one con. I mm-hmm. am very sturdy, you guys. <laughs> uh, let's see. Plus two. Been whiz. eating your Wheaties. That's right. It, yeah. It, I'm I'm interested about this. So you're an you're an empathic individual. So who yes. sought after you? Is it like, is there, um, I'm starting to get a sense because of the, the witch's apprentice and the family of the apprentice that there's some divide potentially in the village between the nobles and the peasants. Like, is there one group that sought after you for, is it like the peasants came to you because they like saw you as like, hey, you're our voice within the house of nobility or is it like you were i don't know you're just more in with you know the family itself yeah. like who, who who are the folks seeking after you uh yeah because i as i originally conceived it i think like again like my our, our great great granddad or whoever old, old master kirkwall himself was again just like a, a huntsman who saved the lord or you know just some woodsman who found the daughter when she was lost and returned it and got graced this land so real salt of the earth types who didn't didn't take none to politic and all that um you know but let's say that we've kind of strayed from that and be kind of increasingly put on airs over generations again maybe the the kind of meddling queen mum in particular was very like uh ostentatious and 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 saw herself better than and that that's kind of necessarily like cuz my father's a little henpecked by his mother still like very much still kind of keeps to this tradition of like well there needs to be nobility and there needs to be peasant folk and i am just not here for it like so i am very much i'm constantly running to and from the village um you know and and it was never a secret but over time it went from just kind of like give her whatever she wants and don't mess with her their nobility you don't know what they're going to be like the more i was just kind of like skinning my knees and you know picking apples for kids and and stuff like i became like you said kind of the voice within the house of just kind of like well needs be mentioned that the you know the property lines haven't been updated since you know last generation and whatever and i was a good ear. I like talking to people. I like collecting stories because there's only so many times you can hear the same five stories from your own house. Mm-hmm. And then, be, yeah, that kind of translated to, hey, if you could mention this, that, or the other thing. And so I would come back from the village, which, again, we haven't gotten to it yet, but I imagine my father's very long suffering for me. Um, you know, it indulges these kind of like, well, couldn't hurt to, if that's what'll keep them happy, you know, that's fine. We'll see to the fences or whatever. 
So it sounds like there might be grandmother issues, actually. Uh, yeah, listen, I found a way more to than, get it more in More than there. daddy issues. <laughs> thought, yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's grandmother issues going oh, on Oh, for sure. I don't okay. think she approves of me. So, so your dad is more like trying to play, you know, peacekeeper almost between yes. you and grandma. 100%. I like that. Mm. She's your wild daughter. <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> yep. I... <laughs> Pardon me. Pardon me if this question is out of place, but are you are you the heir, Marty? Are you the firstborn? Oh. Uh, let's let some more things take shape first. But that's a good question okay. to to have. If uh, I don't have it by the end of my rolls, then I will I will come up with one. I imagine there is already some relationship, at least in the back of my mind, being built between what's going on with the witch's apprentice's dad. Mm. And the role that your character is playing, Marty, is the mm. wild daughter. So, it, it, I mean, there's there's some obvious connections there, right? Yeah, yeah. Of how you probably met as, as children. But very cool. I like it. Okay. Uh, Marty, there's no symbol next to uh, right. this table for you. But if you want to add anything else to the map or you're inspired that you feel like you want to name there... an NPC and come up with an important NPC that we've identified so far. It sounds like grandma's pretty important. I don't know if we want to give her a name. That's true. Say that That's she's going to be pretty important to our story or not. What do you think? Let's see. She does seem to be like it it seems like her shadow is going to loom because again, I could only go one generation away from having a mommy issue. Um Yeah, let's uh I'm sure there is a text line here. Um, I don't know if you have a name in mind for Grandma or if you want to roll, but if you want to roll, I'm happy to support a D20 roll for a name for Grandma. Let's, um... Yeah, let's... Let's do it. A D20, you say? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. What do I got? 20? Mm, Okay. Oh, how about Violet? Violet, 100%. (sighs) That's a good My grandma. Goodness. <laughs> Violet Kirkwall. <laughs> what? Violent? Did you say? Oh, Violet. No, yes. there's no N in there? No, no, but I think uh, it might be interesting if that became her reputation. Old Violent Violet. <laughs> Let's see. Boy, the... Goodness. She gets the switch out. Yeah. The peasantry. Let's see. That is not showing up very well. Is anyone even seeing that? Although it does needs to be mentioned i'm zoomed out to 30 myself so oh so you can uh here i'll highlight and like blow it up to size there we go yeah there's a there's a little font like a font size or whatever uh and i did spell it wrong so if you can correct that too while you're at it (laughs) that would be great (laughs) maybe that's how they spell violent yeah actually (laughs) that's one of my favorite things about old country uh like southern styles is it's spelled how it sounds they thought yeah. it was Violet. That's how it was. So <laughs> I'm fine either way. But yes, now it's that's corrected. That's I feel good about it. Perfect. Violet Kirkwall. Goodness. Okay. Back to our adventurous trader. Okie dokie. Let's see what table two comes up with. Table two is how did you distinguish yourself as a child? Same. Oh, shoot. I accidentally pressed on help. Oh, I didn't want that. Uh, D8, you say, is a four. No secret escaped to you. Would you like to keep that roll, or would you want to change it up? Yeah, I want that. <laughs> I want that one. <laughs> 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 okay, well, no secret escaped you. What do you think, Soup? How does that tie in? Um, I think that it might tie into the kind of, like, fortune-telling fate thing that I've kind of got going on with my family. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of like maybe like as all the the ladies were sitting around at the loom trading, you know, their their hot goss and and their fortune tellings of the day. Um, spilling the tea. Spilling, spilling that tea. Um, that, yeah, that was kind of like where we all learned of all the different scenes secrets and goings-ons and possible goings-ons of the future. I, okay. <laughs> I imagine that could lead to trouble. Well, that'll be, that'll be interesting to see how that ties in. So is there somebody, is there somebody in the family? Like, is there a grandmother figure or something? You, you mentioned this was a activity of the women, this fortune telling activity. 
mm-hmm. there somebody in the family that's like uh do you have that matriarch type of role as well that is yeah. sort of the lead in that yeah i think that i could probably very much relate with the nobleman's daughter of like having you know grandma kind of being the the leader of all of this okay um and then yeah mom uh i'm imagining some older sisters for me maybe do we feel like uh grandma plays uh since she's the the matriarch does she play a grandma weaver as it would she play a central role in maybe some of our story do we want to come up with a name for grandma weaver sure i'd be down i'm assuming your last name's weaver because <laughs> that's what they are uh, if Miller, i'm wrong actually, please correct me uh, <laughs> no yeah let's go with weaver yeah um and then it's a d20 roll i got a 19 oh 19 oh ursula Ooh. Ursula weaver. grandma ursula We've already got a generational thing going here. I think there's there's grapes on that vine for sure. <laughs> I I, I want to like what's what's a key personality trait about Grandma Weaver? Like what is if there's like one key thing that sticks out about Grandma Weaver? What is it? Is because I I imagine the whole learning of secrets and the the you know using the loom to do that. There's mm-hmm. a it's a, like a bit of an eccentric nature maybe, but maybe not. Maybe she's just like this very loving grandma type that just, you know, does it for good or is it, you know, like where, where do you see that sort of spectrum? I was kind of imagining kind of like, have you guys seen Coco? Has everyone seen Coco? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kind of like the grandma in Coco where she is like a bit eccentric, but it's like towards like traditions you know she's she's very like about like keeping the traditions of the family and everybody's sticking to it and even though it's like grandma you know like it's absolutely ridiculous to hold on to you know in the morning you wake up and throw salt over your shoulder like she is very staunch about but you have to do it there's just this foot high pile of salt behind her bed. <laughs> you don't ever clean that salt up. If you do, the goblins will get you. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So, um, throw salt over shoulder and don't. Uh, so, daring to presume, I imagine Grandma's not going to take very kindly to the idea that you want to travel. No. As a traitor, <laughs> that might be. On how the horizon. would you throw the salt over the shoulder <laughs> yeah. when you wake up? And Where are you going to keep your salt gonna pile? Touch it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the goblins are going to come for sure. If you don't have a set bed, then where do you keep your salt pile? I mean... <laughs> wow. All right. Well, it sounds like we've got maybe another important NPC. Maybe yeah. there's more to add to the map. Soup, I'll leave that up to you. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try and add text down here. Let's see if it'll let me do it. Andy, we can come back to get ready for your second table for okay. the Witch's Apprentice. Okay. How did you distinguish yourself as a child? It's a D8, and I got a 2. There wasn't a game you couldn't win. Hmm. Hmm. Would you like to keep that one, Andy, or you want to pick another one? No, I I like that. I like that kind of competitive um edge kind of thing yeah is it is it is that competitive nature uh does that stem you think from the fact of being outcast and being a survivalist type of nature you always feel like you have to I think, sort of compete to survive and win i think for sure she she yeah. feels like she has to prove herself okay uh and yeah it's just kind of always had to do it so i'm going to always be the best yeah okay well and m- might tire be related to well I, I think you had said that maybe silas on his way out was just kind of like please watch after my daughter but maybe that idea that the f- fate seems charmed of you kind of they you always seem to pull the card that you need the dice always rolls under and and you got the devil's look so I, I have to ask, what was the game? What was like your your go to game that was like everyone in the village was like, 
if I could only beat that witch's apprentice. <laughs> trying to think of like a good sort of old timey game um the maypole she's so good at the maypole <laughs> yeah, all i could think was a hoop and stick and that's not really a yeah. game <laughs> i was about to say she's fucking crazy at hoop and stick man there's just no beating her her stick game like, is just... there like a whole judging thing for hoop and stick where like, no, wait, <laughs> I think older this people town... would come out and judge and like, they were like well, how can we not give her a 10 i like, think this town look is how a... creative <laughs> this is a hoop and stick town it's just that's what you do <laughs> Stick town. The penny farthing <laughs> races. Cheese rolling. Kirk, Kirk Wall just got a little bit sillier. Right? Yeah. But, you know, it's fine. I think that was inevitable eventually. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, I, want you to go with, I want you to go with curling, Andy. Curling? Oh, yeah. so it's, a, it's a cold city. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I like... Uh, no, and it's you can't lose in any game. I think we probably have a preferred game, but apparently you're just... Hoop and stick. Hoop and stick mastery. I, yeah. Actually, you should probably, I'd probably make a GM call here that hoop and stick could be a skill on your, on your yeah. character sheet, maybe. <laughs> I'll take hoop and stick. Yeah. I'll take it. For sure. I'm just it's saying, if it come ever comes later. down to a hoop and stick off at some yeah. point in our adventures, you're going to you're gonna have the bonus, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> How will you solve this problem, witch, with your dark magics? No, I'm going to hoop and stick them, everybody. Like, yeah. Let's go. Me and you. Hoop I'm and sh- stick. <laughs> Liz Challenging. in chat said hoop and stick is the dance team of the old days. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's fair. That's very fair. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Well, now that we've established that bit of lore, <laughs> uh, Andy, if there's anything else, if there's a hoop and stick ring or something, uh, is there like a competitive area that you have hoop and stick go down in the village? I don't know. If you want to add something to the map or... <laughs> There's a coliseum. <laughs> <Little icon. laughs> I mean, look, my great great grandpappy was really enamored of hoop and stick. It, but maybe, but maybe the town down. is like a little, you know, it's not. And obviously, hoop and stick is a joke. But it, maybe it is like a little sporting village. People play stickball, soccer, rugby. Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing where you throw a log. But everybody shows up for hoop and stick. Yeah, the and there's a hoop and stick match. Oh, hey man. everybody's there. Maybe it, maybe it, Coliseum sold out. Maybe there's like sold a, out Coliseum. There's hoop and stick races. There's hoop and stick freestyle. <laughs> okay. All right, hoop and stick we, relay. We're, we're going. We're going too far. We're, okay. we're on a time constraint here, everybody. Ah, that's true. That's true. Oh yeah, we got an hour left. Okay, if we're only halfway uh, through. All right. All right. Cool. Uh, Marty. Let's yes. come back to you, right? We're ready for page two. Table That's three. right. That's right. All right. Let's so find out more about uh, the nobleman's wild daughter. The other player characters were your best friends. Who else near your family's estates befriended you while you were growing up? Excellent question. Hmm. I roll a d8. And what's it say? There we go. Uh, seven. seven. Oh. All right. Let's find out. Once again, I'm having navigation. All right. Uh, Seven. Despite being of noble blood, you actually did chores with the servants. I kind of like that. Let's see. Blacksmith, fisherman. Uh, Chafing under my family's rules, I would sneak out. I feel like that's a very Marty trait. You have my center shops, you came to strategy and skill. You learned the ways of the castle, side of the cook. I had a tryst. Uh, let's see, did chores with the servants, or... I really like the grizzled captain of the guard took a liking to me, but... Let's see. Again, I need to peer forward just to make sure I don't want to reserve. Mm-hmm. Let's see, Top I don't know. I, 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 I feel especially for my first time that I, I want to go with the dice as much as they say. So yeah, I I think we've already established that I'm not above it. Um, and so the idea that, yeah, I, I've befriended, you know, especially if we've established it in the last several generations, we've kind of trended more towards putting on airs. Um, that one of the many reasons that my grandmother disapproves is that I actually know all the servants' names um, <laughs> and treat them as people. Um, oh. And and do my own laundry, thank you. Um, okay, okay. Maybe that. So, um, yeah, is there the is dynamic, there a certain but... is there a certain servant? Was there like the 
the head, you know, like the the, the head servant yeah. uh, that you that you befriended, or was it maybe the newest and lowliest of servants that you befriended when you were a child? Is there one that sticks out that we might call out as like uh, somebody important to you from that lives within the house or yeah. within the keep? Um, let's say. There has to be someone who's just kind of in charge of the maids and washerwomen and such. Um, so I, I think, I, I think if it at least started, if it doesn't persist, that she continues to have this contention of like, you can't be doing, like you need to let us do it. And I've slowly won that fight. And now to the point where she's absolutely much more comfortable with just kind of being like, um, those dishes need doing you there oh, okay. um so yes I, I think i don't i don't has it has okay it's become I, like a thing where she's she's almost seen it as an opportunity to instill some discipline within you perhaps. yeah yeah I, I think she now it's gone from you can't do that mistress to all right then let's see how you are scrubbing the midden then because guess what um we want to give this uh this head lady servant uh, a name yeah but let's let's set the dice to side. It's a d20 for, for names. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And let's see, a four. A four. Uh, Cecilia. Cecilia. Uh, Cecilia. On the chart. <laughs> <laughs> She's breaking my heart. All right. Head of maids. Liz sure. had a, a funny thing for you in chat, Marty. Uh, considering nobles used to have their servants dress them, Marty's character's big rebellion could just be dressing herself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, first, especially if they keep bringing me dresses, because I think we've established I'm a knee skinner. So <laughs> well, um, she's constantly having to clean you up. I, I think that's probably I, I that's great, Liz. I will use that absolutely. I think that's probably certainly where it started. Like, right? Like, I'm just kind of like, no, I don't like that. I'm dressing in this way instead, and then okay. over time became, and I'm doing my own laundry. I can cook, whatever. Kind of started pretty snotty, and now we've kind of established that just kind of like, all right, then if that's how you're going to be, then I'm not cleaning up after you anymore either. So let's see. So it gives me another plus one strength. Plus one int. Dude, I'm broken, by the way. Guys. <laughs> cool. Um, and if uh, you've got the little hand symbol next to that table, Marty, yes. which means add an important NPC. Now, you've already added Violet, but I imagine if you yeah. want to add Cecilia to the, uh, to the list of important NPCs, feel free. Let's see. And then, Soup, we can move on to you for table number three. Okie dokie. Uh, the other player characters were your best friends. Who else in the village befriended you while you were growing up? And I also have a D8. I got a two. The fishermen took a liking to you and you swapped stories with them. Want to stick with the fishermen? Or would you like to choose a different one? I suppose if there's fishermen, that means it could be, there must be a body of water nearby. It could be an opportunity for you to trade, to ply your trade at sea. That's an interesting idea. Maybe that's kind of how I started getting this idea in my head that I wanted to kind of travel for trade. Yeah, I like that. I, I kind of had this idea. Yeah, I'm a ducks kid. <laughs> <laughs> um, I kind of had this idea that maybe um, because like we're doing all this fortune telling and weaving kind of a fates kind of thing that maybe she saw a fortune for herself, uh, like traveling, doing trade, making the family name uh, in the, the loom weaving business bigger. Um, and so maybe yeah. that's what brought her to kind of be like, well, the fishermen take their trade elsewhere. Maybe I should go and ask them about it. And so then that's kind of why I started befriending these fishermen and swapping okay. stories with them. Okay, very cool. 
Is there one? Is there one Fisher person that uh, that sticks out as like the one you swap the most stories with, and you started to learn how you might actually, you know, ply your trade at some point in the future? Uh, yeah. Let's say that there's a, a strapping young son of a, a fisherman that was willing to kind of talk to me first and introduce me to everyone. It sounds like we have to name this strapping young son. <laughs> I got a four. How about Cadby? C A D B Y. Cadby. All right. <laughs> sounds like a total nerd. <laughs> I was gonna say. I was gonna say. Sounds like. Um, oh, sounds like old money or something like that. Like, you'll be a noble someday, Cadby. <laughs> <laughs> they had great aspirations. I'm for a him. fisherman. I want to go out and do my best at the dock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be the best fisher. Yeah. Like, oh, God, be. <laughs> the, the Fishers the, just consider themselves temporarily embarrassed millionaires. <laughs> That's <laughs> one day their fortune's coming in, and then Cadby is going to sound pretty cool. <laughs> okay. Oh, poor, poor Cadby. All right. Did, did Cadby have any? Is like, is that the way that you got some of the stuff that you got that was mentioned at the beginning, like the mule, uh, Jocelyn? Did she come off of the boat? Is that the way that, you know, some of the things that you acquired to become a trader? Is that the way it would have occurred from? Definitely think that he would have at least, like, said, like, well, these are the things that you need to, this, okay. the, these are what traders all have. And that so drove that's. you to acquire that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. All right, cool. If you, if you want to add, had be the fisher boy to. <laughs> to the important NPC list or anything else you want to add, Sue, feel free. I got him on there. <laughs> Cadby um, has been added. Uh, Andy, do you want to take on table three for the Witch's Princess? Okay. Uh, the other player characters were your best friends. Who else in the village befriended you while you were growing up? So I can beat them at stick and hoop. Seven on my D8. Uh, the old widow needed help around her house. Uh, oh. so... Well, is the old widow, is a is it like your dad's assumed dead and that's your mom? Or is this a different widow? If, if we remember our Tiffany aching, going around and being mm -hmm. a general help mm -hmm. is, that's good witching right there. Yeah, yeah. No, I, and I definitely am planning to channel tiffany aching um well that's a phrase you don't necessarily think you're I, gonna hear every day it makes sense it makes sense um <laughs> does it <laughs> okay let's see i cc is a ah, crap uh sorry i just closed the window um is is your grandmother an old widow Yes. Oh. What? So, perhaps I have to go around and not touch salt piles. <laughs> now, I'm leaving. You're it, helping ma people stay away from the salt piles. <laughs> Listen, she's really busy at the loom. You gotta go around and check on those salt piles. Yeah. So I don't know. That's that's just a thought. If that's not okay. That's no, I kind of love that because she. I had pictured her as being quite eccentric so like maybe she's like yeah she's like i am busy here i need you to go and and monitor the village for me <laughs> oh okay um, okay so you your grandmother's already on the npc list right yeah mm -hmm. ursula um so let me add did we add your your outcast father I silas i don't think we maybe? did so let's add okay him. It adds Silas. Do you have a do you have a family last name or is it just Silas the busybody? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really tiny. I'll fix that in a second. Um, oh, do I have a family last name? Oh, what's this? A table at the drawer? Hmm. Uh, yeah, I'll roll on the table. I, was gonna say, I have I have the I have I think I picked up the witch's name and my name, but I don't have a last. You wanna, name. If you want to roll a d6, I'll roll a d6. Uh, six. Tamworth, T-A-M-W-O-R-T-H. T. 
Tamworth. I don't know what we did. It was worth a tam. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe that's why. Maybe that's that, why. That was your father it's, saying. Yeah, anything yeah. worth doing is worth a tam. <laughs> Isn't that just a little hat? It doesn't mean anything, Dan. <laughs> it's like why are why are you just yeah, saying a tam things? is a Scottish hat? So I like that though. If it's worth anything, it's worth a tam. It's not. Why couldn't we just be the weavers or the fishers? Now we're the Tamworths. <laughs> what do we do? Now I can see why the Noble family's upset. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> he's he's definitely loyal to somebody enough to have that kind of hoity-toit name. Y'all didn't pick a lane. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Perhaps you were historically haberdashers. Making yeah. those stupid little hats. I mean, noble hats, all absolutely. Say, aren't you Scottish? <laughs> I don't. I I have no idea what I am. Just gonna keep sing songing my way through it. Don't clear your head. So at this point, <laughs> normally we would, like we've done in the past, move on to table four. Mm-hmm. But but since we're doing this little mini campaign thing, this is the DM's chance to introduce a threat into the land. Oh. <gasps> one or yes. more. But I'm thinking we pick one because we're you know we're gonna keep this sort of short. A couple of handfuls of sessions or a handful or so. So I'm going to introduce the vengeful worm into our story. What? <clears throat> and I would like to have so each of you as a child has had some type of interaction with this vengeful worm that is part of the story of the land. Okay. And I need each of you to roll a d6 in order, starting with Marty, to find out what your interaction with this vengeful worm was like. Okay. And this want... will modify your stats. Okay. And this is a table you cannot pick and choose from. This is just okay. something we're going to roll, and we're going to go with it. A one. A one. Marty, when the dragon first flew from its lair and went hunting, when it first reawakened, you were in its path and you were scorched by its fire. Good Lord. You will reduce your strength by one, but you will increase your con by one because you survived the flame. <laughs> you are a... You are a hearty something, aren't you? I, By the I, way, she I have never to mention, gets sick. <laughs> your, yeah. your starting scores can't go above nineteen, Marty. Okay, well that'll be. It good seems to know, like it might apply to you at some yeah, point. Yeah, my so. con is getting there. All right, so strength minus one, con plus one. Yes. Um, okay. Tell me, tell me about this dragon, this encounter with this dragon. Um. As a child. Okay. If you'll allow me, and if no other rules further augment this. It might have been my natural kind of like dicking around. Like I, I kind of put, uh, you know, our, our house on a hill here, um, kind of poking around the caves and 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 grubbing around the forest. Um, that I might have awakened this beast. Oh, that in so my it was like sleeping under the hill. It, yeah, that in my clinking and clanging around in places I should know better than to what of. Um, now, whether or not I'm directly responsible for, like, whether or not it's some millennial sleep that it was waking up from anyway or whatever, but I probably at least harbor the feeling that it's my fault that this thing woke up. And in part because the first thing it did was scorch me on its way past of, you know, and, and I don't think I made it yeah. into its lair because, as it says, it first emerged and I happened to be there as it was just like, whoever you are, you're a threat. You've got a bow and arrow or a sword or something. Yeah. Interesting. So, I, I think that's uh all right i'm good with that and actually i i got an idea okay as it flew by and it burnt you with flames mm -hmm. it cackled and thus became the laughing dragon <laughs> oh that's it guys we did it we said the name of the show on the show now as we just have to say beyond the wall and we're done no very good garrett i love that i love that quite a bit <laughs> so it is the laughing dragon it is truly a laughing dragon. Yes. We don't we don't Love have it. to name we don't have to name the inn in town. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh soup, would you like to make a roll? Sure. Six, please. I got a four. A four. 
oh, your your grandmother told you recently that you are descended from a mighty hero who died in combat with the laughing dragon and warned you that the beast remembers its foes. You will reduce your intelligence by one. I guess it weighs on your mind. Yeah. But you increase your strength by one. Or is it, is it implying all heroes are dumb? I... <laughs> No, 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 just just like the heroes of generations. Yeah, no, listen. Like, oh, my grandfather was a hero, so it's just... <laughs> I don't have to think. <laughs> to run at a dragon, something in your brain's burned. You know what I mean? So, yeah. It's something, not... Something's not firing, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that could be. Um, oh, my. Soup? What do we think? Okay, so... Since we've established that grandma is a widow, what if my grandfather was like hmm. went out to fight the dragon? Oh, but oh, right on, right on. Yeah. That, that. And is that why your grandmother doesn't want you to become a hero? This is becoming very Coco. Oh. <laughs> this, yeah. is, this is very yeah. much becoming Coco. I, yes, look, I'm I think on board. So. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very good movie. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, I think that you're you're right on there, Andy. That is, is definitely like, listen, he ran out there and got himself killed. Stay inside. Yeah. Stay yeah. at your loom. You read other people's fortunes like you're supposed to. Yeah. Okay, cool. I mean, do we, I mean, do you want to give your grandfather a name? Or is it just enough to say, oh, my granddad of old? Uh, Let's name grand, grandpappy. Oh, I got a one. A one. And so did he when he was fighting that dragon. Very good. Oh. <laughs> Arthur. Oh. oh. Classic. Arthur Weaver. Oh. It's the classic, yeah. I love it. Arthur Weaver. Arthur Weaver, he, he loomed himself a sword. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was his enough. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's issue one. <laughs> I have yeah. this sturdy cloth armor and my cloth sword. <laughs> my cloth shield. Surely I shall slay this beast. Art, Ooh. Art, I'm going to need you to look at yourself <laughs> and reconsider. Looks well, good. That's what you're just, saying. Just stop a second. <laughs> this is why you have minus one. one yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, yarn goes up like Tinder, Art. You know. <laughs> Poor guy. You do know this thing breathes fire. <laughs> what? Uh, it, it's Andy? been established. <laughs> Andy, would you like to roll your d6? d6. To see, as a child, what? how you might have interacted with the laughing dragon. We all got different numbers, which is good, because I was a little afraid we'd double up. I got a three. Oh. You uh, met the dragon alone one evening by chance. Great. Cool. You were frozen with terror. Yep convinced of your death but the dragon said you were too small to eat and spoke with you instead and it laughed and then it said it enjoyed your company uh, okay i want to hear all about this but first of all it's a minus one to charisma but it liked me i don't me. understand completely. <laughs> maybe your personality took a hit because of that because it laughed at you uh but you do pick up a skill in riddles <laughs> Hmm. So okay, there you okay. go. We're, you get a stat decrease, but you can very, tell yourself some riddles. Very classic. What's the ability for riddles? Is it intelligence? Is it charisma? <laughs> it's just a skill. It's just a riddle. Skill. Okay. Well, you can't lose a game, so maybe that includes riddles. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, boy, I don't even know what to make of that. Um, I don't like that the dragon cornered me. <laughs> Um, yeah, how did this all go down? Oof. I guess you had to survive, so... Yeah, so, I mean... It clearly weighed on me if I have minus one charisma. It... it ah, man. Is it, like a, is it like a task the witch's apprentice, or the witch set, set to her apprentice to, like, go do something off in the wild to learn some weird thing, and, like, the dragon happened to be there after being awakened... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was like uh you're not you're not big enough to eat so i'm going to like play with you you know uh, yeah sense. yeah i like that yeah it's some kind of yeah menial task that turned into a a test of bravery 
And I do wonder if people believe me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was just going to ask, like, who believes you? Does the because witch even believe you? Like, ah, uh, you survive. Even send you to do some little thing, and you're coming back with these stories. Yeah, no, you didn't survive an encounter with a dragon. <laughs> Is there is there anything in your conversation with the dragon that you found of interest or of note that we should that we should capture? Apparently a riddle. Um It really likes body poems. It's just a weird quirk of its <laughs> I tried to cheat with the riddle. It's like what's in my pocket? I'm like, that's not really a riddle. I have no way of knowing that. <laughs> okay. It's really crappy riddles. <laughs> I can't what, lose. <laughs> what is behind my back? Okay, that's yeah. there's trees back there. No, that's yeah. not what I mean. <laughs> No, but I'm like holding something in my claws. But okay, I'm right, you're, though. You're cheating is what you're doing. Yeah. Um. <laughs> it just tells a crappy riddle and then laughs. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, like, it's, abs- it's like it's amusing itself. It's like entertaining itself. Yeah. It does it. Nobody <laughs> else finds it funny. It's like... <laughs> Spent the whole walk home. But I don't. But the riddle doesn't make sense. Like, I don't get it. Like, but everyone okay. always feels obligated to laugh because they're okay. terrified of it. <laughs> and so it thinks it's funny. <laughs> but yeah, I kind of like the idea that you called it on its bullshit. It's like, hey, nobody's ever done that before. That's fun. This is fun. We're having a lot of fun here in the forest. <laughs> then finally, it just got, it grew irritated because you weren't laughing. And it's like, uh, yep. I'm just leaving. <laughs> yeah. It cackled and flew away. <laughs> See you next time, Toothpick. Uh, okay. You didn't need me to fight some guy in the <laughs> All right. Well, there we go. We've got a cackling dragon in the land, so that's, mm-hmm. that's good. great. Okay. We're level one. <laughs> All right. Let's get back on track then, and let's find out how you uh, each actually came to become what you've become. So. Uh, Marty, let's go back to the nobleman's wild daughter and take a look at. Uh, you've got a little bit of verbiage you can read uh, between table three and four. Yes, yes. You learned the ways of the warrior as well as the courtier. You became a level one warrior. You gained the class abilities, weapon specialization, and knacks, and the skill etiquette. And fascinating uh, skill to throw in a warrior there. Uh, the tables below will further define your class abilities. How did you become such a remarkable warrior? So, question one, who taught me to fight? Excellent question. I'll roll a d6 here. And what's it say there? I got it. Two. You learn from the old mercenary who serves your parents. Your weapon specialization class ability is with the longsword. Let's see. Landless knight. Father always wanted a son. Gruff sergeant at arms. Handsome young hunter. Well, I do you like a handsome young hunter? Uh, you shot yourself while watching the soldiers drill. I like the old mercenary who serves my parents, though. I think, uh, as we've established, I'm nobility, etc. And that's a plus two to dexterity and a specialization to the left. Now, what uh, someone bring? Yeah, up so the speed. specialization to the left means, like in the narrative, it tells you what weapon you have specialization with. So it's okay. a long sword. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, in the in roll 20 there's a class references section marty so you can look at the actual like class reference for warrior since you're a warrior and it'll tell you like weapon specialization and knacks and give you some ideas to what that stuff is and how it affects you and your abilities um so you learned from an old mercenary who served your parents Mm. yes Mm. shall we talk about the old mercenary yes we should we should um and especially, again, I think this very much reflects the fact that I was real hands-on with the servants, too, of just kind of, you know, uh, that I, I kept chatting up the uh, the old mercenary who probably, similar to the, the house mistress, was just kind of amused that I wanted to do it all myself and eventually slowly entertained the fact that, like, all right, go ahead, pick up that stick, try not to hit yourself with it. Actually, that wasn't bad. Here, we'll do this. Um, so, yeah, I don't... No, something about the 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 noun mercenary suggests to me he's not necessarily local, but we've 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 kind of outsourced to hire the the best. Um, some grizzled old Harrison Ford type, I think. This, is this somebody they brought in to in, investigate these outlandish rumors of uh, of a dragon that you claimed that you got oh. burnt, and nobody's really believing you either. <laughs> It's like, all right, bring in that old guy. You remember that one guy? Yeah, yeah. Send him like through the hill. Or if you whatever. weren't, if 
you weren't running around the kitchens all the time, you wouldn't be burned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Leaned up against the stove. That's it. Um, oh, it's a dragon. Uh, like half your body scarred. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. It's like you can't do that in a kitchen. No, obviously you are playing in the kitchen. Yeah. You got um, what you deserve. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I think definitely someone who's seen a lot more than this village um you know but is is well past you know they're done with wars they're done with gold for hire this is their retirement plan is you get to sit around an estate and occasionally oh, okay. like spook a wolf off the property or something perfect <laughs> um and yeah i like to think i keep them young because i keep them guessing and, and jumping um yeah. Do we want to give the old mercenary a name? Yeah, let's um, let's let's go to the chart. Would uh, that's a D twenty two? D twenty. Yeah. Right. I assume this is a an old man mercenary. Oh, we it's do... another one. So I presume that's Arthur. Would you rather me re-roll, or is Arthur just a common name in these hills? I usually just go with the next one. Okay, what's the next one? Anden. Oh, I'm sorry, Auden. Auden. A u d e n. Auden. I like Auden. Auden. He is, and maybe even like, um, you know, since Arthur died from this dragon, maybe we pulled in this mercenary earlier as like someone we needed as like to have experience with like full proper monsters. But again, this thing's been asleep for the last twenty years or forty years or whatever. So, Auden's been mostly collecting a paycheck uh, until fairly recently, where it's been like, oh, oh, there is a dragon. Oh, gotcha. Okay. gotcha, 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 gotcha. Um, is Auden in over his head now? Um, perhaps. I think he was definitely much more uh, accomplished with uh, Slayer of Men and Wolves kind of deal. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So he's like, uh, I imagine, like in, in a line of business, he's like, he's like a consultant, right? Who thought, yeah. oh, I'm getting into a cushy job, and it's yeah, like, yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> He put uh, dragons on his resume, thinking it would never come <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah, yeah he lied Absolutely. on his resume. <laughs> now it says here you are an experienced dragon slayer definitely mm -hmm. so he does like these outlandish things that like have no bearing like yeah, yeah, yeah you you gather you know twigs of the maple tree and you yeah. form them in a circle around your your keep and <laughs> yeah that will protect you uh you're, you're putting the space in the wrong place i'm a dragon's lair uh yes i have laid down many dragons um don't worry about it they all sleep before me <laughs> yeah <laughs> they I, nap in fear <laughs> yes i have some vacation time coming up that i'd like to talk about <laughs> i'd like to cash that in how's my pension doing is that negotiable or that could you ask your right. grandma i'm afraid of her. <laughs> soup yeah. You want to give us a little more blurb about the adventurous trader? Sure. Uh, you learn the ways of the merchant. You become a level one rogue. You gain the class abilities, fortune's favor, and highly skilled in the skill appraisal. The tables below will give you your bonus skills from your class abilities. Um, how did you decide to begin your career? So I got a D6. Uh, when did you first show aptitude for trading? I got a six. Ooh. Uh, even as a child, you were never lost when you went wandering and always knew the lay of the land and the directions of the road. Wow. Sounds pretty handy. Sure. You want to keep that one, Sue? Yeah, I, I like that one. All right. Yeah, and I think me? that that could tie into like the the whole kind of like fortune telling aspect of like maybe I followed grandma's foolproof instructions for never getting lost. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. All right. So the uh, the loom helped guide you. Yeah. Is there is there something like? Uh, meta in that like not only does it guide you in the physical sense but the loom is guiding you in like life <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think it's kind of like like the the strings of fate are kind of uh favoring me kind of tugging mm -hmm. me in the right direction okay. 
think there's something strangely implied by this, CC, which is that your grandmother must be full on denying every time your fortune comes up in the loom of just kind of like, nope, nope, no good. I don't nope, want that. No, would, no. Yeah, absolutely not. not. I'll go kick the salt pile, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me. So help me. <laughs> so help me, fates. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Okay, interesting. Um, I'll write that down. All right, cool. I'm good with that. Andy, okay. would you like to do uh, a little bit of blurb about the Witch's Prentice sure. and uh, your fourth table? Uh, <clears throat> pardon me. The witch chose you to be her apprentice, and you began your training. Uh, you became a level one mage. You gained the class abilities Sense Magic and Spellcasting, the skill Herbalism, and the cantrip Hexing. Uh, the table below will tell you your other spells. What else happened to you while you were her apprentice? And it's a D6. Uh... I got... Where am I? A one. Um, she was impressed by the old stories and lore that filled your head. Okay. Hmm. What do you think about that, Earl? You want to keep that one or you want to choose something else? I like it. I'm just trying to think how or why or I would have known. I mean, if I'm if I'm not just helping uh, Soup's grandmother, but if I'm helping a lot of people in town, mm-hmm. maybe I'm just hearing stories, hearing about the dragons or the fairies or, you know... Um, the dwarves in the mountain, the the hobbitses in the Shire, um, hanging out with the fishermen, or you know, kind of just doing kind of busy work around town as a uh, a witch should do, a witch is supposed to help the townsfolk. Okay. Um, okay. Kind of, maybe I was doing that before the witch even gave me her apprentice, and she's like, "Yes, that one, you're doing it. <laughs> I'm half done. Exactly, <laughs> I'm half done." <laughs> Oh, cool. so you're you're becoming like a de facto uh, village historian of sorts, then just sort of gathering this all up as you go, right? I like it. Yes, that's good witching. Yep. Okay, okay cool. so I get. I can only fill out some on my sheet. What did I get? So I get herbalism and folklore as skills. All right, awesome. All right, let's move on to uh, our next table. Marty, we'll come back to you, the nobleman's wild daughter. Can you give us uh, table number five. Let's see. What is your role within the order? Is that right? Oh, the. No. Uh, I think it's still on I page might have, two. I might have picked the. Oh, that was the novice templar I picked, accidentally. I was about to say I'm not in an order. All right. How did you finally earn the men's respect? I mm-hmm. let's see. Oh, nope. I rolled two d six. I apologize. Let me roll one d six directly afterwards. So one. How did I do that? All right. Uh, you saved an injured hunter in the woods. Kind of like that. A beast of legend attacked the local village, and you were the one who drove it off. No, we already know that's not true. Uh, you saved the village from bandits. Raised from yeah. I like that. I saved an injured hunter in the woods. Okay. Oh, tell me all about this. Yeah. Uh, again, I think we, we've well established that I'm, I'm constantly out there. Uh, one, two, three. Um, yeah, that, that I, I range the woods around uh, my family's estate here, actually. Let me... Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say you have a little map icon next to this <laughs> table. So adding um, the woods. Yes. The woods um, where you were burnt, the <laughs> woods where you saved the hunter. Yes, yes. Um, woods are very important to you. And again, I th- you know, I was certainly asking, you know, Auden to teach me this, teach me that, or whatever. And, and, and let's say, since I had yet to earn uh, the respect, that it was just kind of like, no, no, you know, your, your eyes are bigger than your stomach there, or whatever. But um, in all my ranging around the estate, uh, yeah, they're... they're was a hunter who thought for sure he was a goner. He'd twisted his leg and fallen down where 
certainly no one would ever find them. Um, except, you know, me getting in any, every crack and crevice around the grounds um, was in a position to hear them calling for help. And let's say, because um, again, to, to earn the respect enough for then Auden to be like, all right, you know what? I'll teach you. Let's actually say like I drove off, you know, whatever wolves or predators were kind of like, oh, now this guy's legs broken. He's easy pickings. We're going to go get him. And so I actually drove them off and like littered him back to like the town or whatever. So it wasn't simply like, oh, I found you. Let me go get help. I mm -hmm. did all of it. And it was enough for everybody to be like, oh, shoot. Yeah. Like, yeah, she's legit. And by the time I got back and I thought Auden was going to be all upset with me, he's like, no, it looks like we should probably teach you how to use that then, you know, yeah, okay. more like that. Could it maybe be a case of like your grandmother was like, well, listen, if you're going to be going down into the woods anyways, might as well have somebody teach you how to be out there kind of a thing. Uh, I think it's definitely more my dad because I okay. think my grandmother is just kind of like, put her in petticoats for Christ's sakes already. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, nice. Is the, is the hunter important enough that we should name the hunter, do you think? Um, see, or is it just, yeah, no, I helped a villager out. Like Did the hunter we become mentioned... important to you, or is it was it just a one sort of a one-time thing? Earlier we'd mentioned the poaching angle, and I do wonder if, if there's an opportunity for that to be Silas, but I, I don't know that that's one for one. I think we've already moved Silas on from that. So <laughs> Silas being outcast was wandering back too close to the village again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so no, yeah, I, uh, let's see. Definitely. Cause I, I it certainly could be Silas. Yeah. He is outcast. He's okay. probably out there living on his own. So, uh, then yes, I, I saved, I saved Silas and, and, and didn't quite know that that wasn't a thing we, we don't, did. Don't, don't tell him it was me. Tell him it was somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, just reverse my name. Tell him it was Salas. That'll throw him off. <laughs> it's so unique and different. Yeah, no no way they'll sense that. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, cool. All right, that's awesome. Yeah, and if you want to add the woods or anything else to the map, Marty, feel free. Yeah, I think I'm just going to add some terrain. Is there a way to clone some of this stuff? Because it feels weird to me that there's only one woods. But oh, uh, can you? Does it allow you to right-click on it? I know I probably can. Uh, let's see, I... can you right click on any of the icons and then do like a copy and a paste? Like I can name them, but no, I don't see copy paste. All right, let uh, me give you. How many do you want? Yeah, no, yeah, just a couple of woods. I feel like timber was our. Uh... Do we need more mountains too, or no? Um, I don't know. How do you guys feel about mountains? There we go. A couple more. There. Yeah. If you want, if you want to add mountains, or if you just want to drag them off to the the right, you know, whatever you want to do. Okay. I'm gonna put. It's, it's become a very nice, beautiful, scenic uh, <laughs> place up there <laughs> yeah. where the nobles live. And, like, it's very sparse, and there's, like, a random coliseum where all the villains <laughs> Perfect place for a dragon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the real secret's going to be that we had to build that coliseum to please the dragon. Uh, <laughs> well, soup, at some point, you're probably going to want to add the docks, actually, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really likes really like you might want to do stick. that after you so let's let's roll on your table though first uh okie dokie uh what? what other talent did you have and i got a five um you can move quietly while on the road or in the forest oh yeah i like that want to be a stealthy trader yeah okay yeah. That's part of what kept you out of trouble whenever you were out uh, never getting lost and learning the roads and such. Yeah, and I think that maybe that's kind of also helped me, you know, uh, sneak out of the house whenever I needed to go and kind of gather up these things and maybe like a secret place for my trading since grandma doesn't approve. Grandma's like, where did that girl go? Do some looming. <laughs> what? She snuck out again. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, maybe if you want to add like the docks or even some roads, since you know so much about the roads, maybe you know all the roads of the village. If, I don't know how many there could be, but. <laughs> Just one maybe road, you... not hard to learn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you've created a bunch of roads. You're out there like stomping down road paths. Yeah. 
<laughs> out there with Jocelyn leading her around. <laughs> Hurry, eat Jocelyn, eat this grass. <laughs> All right. Andy, what more do we learn about the witch's apprentice? Let's see. Uh, with what did the witch have power? And oh, yeah. Here we go. A D6. Hold on. Here's the one. Three. Okay. Um, with spirits and the unseen world, she taught you the following magics. The spell Whispering Wind, the ritual Unseen Servant, and the cantrip Second Sight. So... Do you, do you like that one, or do you want to choose another um, one? Just a second. So, okay. This, this, this feels like an important table for some reason. <laughs> yeah, yes. I, it's like, okay. So my character so far is very smart, but I have a, so I have a question about magic. Um, under cantrips, it says like next to the name, it says like wisdom. So you use wisdom for for those or intelligence. What, what is it for spells though? Is it the same? Or do oh, spells good. use intelligence or wisdom? Good question. Um, is it in the introduction? Let's see. Cantrips don't always have characteristics. They're always assumed to have a range of near and special durations explained in their text. Cantrips and rituals require the ability score checks. So cantrips and rituals rituals require ability score checks. And so each tells you whether the cantrip or ritual in question checks intelligence or wisdom. Uh, does it continue on the cantrips page? It does. <laughs> Cast a cantrip, you make either an intelligence or wisdom test, depending on what the cantrip's description says. Success means the cantrip works, more or less, as desired, and a failed roll means that one of two things can happen at the player's discretion. Either the mage finds himself robbed of his magical energy, or the magic spins out of control. Um, oh, it doesn't go on to talk about spells. What does it say on the first page of spells? The simplest and most reliable sort of magic comes in the form of spells. Each spell works in a particular way every time it's cast, and they tend to be more powerful than cantrips and weaker than rituals. You can cast a number of spells per day equal to your level, and then after that you're considered to be exhausted and may no and cast no more. Though you can attempt to still cast cantrips or rituals. So um uh, let's see. In order to learn a new spell, you take a full week studying it from a book or a mentor and then make an intelligence test. And if that's successful, you then know the spell and can cast it as normal. If you fail, you have to, you have to wait and then attempt it again after you've gained another level. So it looks like spells aren't there. There aren't checks. It's just you're limited in how many you can cast. Andy. Okay. Uh, well, if that's the case... But intelligence is your key attribute for learning new spells. Okay, let me see my character oh, sheet. And you said... I, told Soup, I told Soup to start drawing, and now she is. Oh, no, that's not me. I can't yeah. actually oh. draw. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing it for her. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> Thank you, Marty. Better. <laughs> Just... <laughs> um, okay, I, so I, my intelligence is already 17. So this would make oh, it I 19, mm -hmm. which would make me very smart. But then, like, the last two, I have to hope I don't get intelligence bumps. Right? I mean, yes. <laughs> it's not like you lose anything. Although I know. you lose the opportunity to, yeah, gain more stats. But I do like, I do like spirits and the unseen world. If min-maxing is important to you, Andy. It's not, it's not usually. But I, I also kind of wanted the, the healing spells. Mm -hmm. Oh, it, and that kind of makes sense with the narrative that you were driving towards. Yeah, I yeah. do think I'm going to use my switch okay. to to instead take the healing spells. So, uh, the witch taught me with health and body, following magic's healing touch, good berry, and blessing. Great. So we haven't talked much about the witch. I imagine then 
you know, we've already established the narrative that the witch is sort of a traditional type of witch, a helper of the village, uh, medicinal in some sense. Uh, do we want to give the witch uh, a name now? Um, maybe uh, explain a little bit about the personality the witch has, make yeah. her an important NPC? Okay. The... I think I want the witch's name to be All Sorts Aggie. All, all sorts, sorts. All sorts. Aggie. All sorts Aggie. It's a name I wrote down forever ago for a witch, and I'm finally going to use it. <laughs> Takes all okay. kinds. All sorts Aggie. Tell me about All Sorts Aggie. She's just. I mean, everybody in the village sort of respects her, and she's. I I think yes. I think perhaps. Especially the te- the common folk respect her. Mm-hmm. However the nobility feels about her is however the nobility feels about her. They may feel a certain way if... They'd just be indifferent or... They may be indifferent. They may think, oh, she's a threat to power. She People respect her. She's sort of like, not quite the mayor, but some sort of a village elder that people respect, a wise woman. Um, the... So yeah, I think I think it's very much. I am very much going for the. If anyone has, I know Marty has the 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 Terry Pratchett sort of view of witches, where you know they are healers, um, they they're judges, they solve disputes, um, they're sort of the peop the helpful people in town who do whatever they can. They're, they're midwi- midwifery, they they're midwives, um. So and and I think I have kind of yeah with this especially. They're the town's healer. Like, they, yep. they're they the doctor. For yep. Perfect. Okay. So. That sounds good to me. If you want to add anything to the map, or certainly I think we should add all sorts Aggie to the uh, the important NPC yeah, list. I'll, I'll add her to the NPC do that, Andy. list. Let me see if there's a... Oh, man. Um, Marty, do we want to come back to you Yeah. in table number six? Let's see. We're on page three now. We are. Okay. Uh, your father threw a tourney and you entered in secret. What happened there? <laughs> oh, uh, oh boy. And the player to my right was there too. Whoever player to my right so is. So the player to your right would be the next player, which would be okay. uh, Soup. All right then. Uh, so let's see. This is a D6. Let's roll it. It seems appropriate that this somewhat rebellious oh. traitor <laughs> is yes. helping you out it's, uh, to enter in secret into the tourney. Let's see. Oh, I'm I'm wondering if this is. You made it halfway through the tournament, but broke your arm. The friend to your right helped you off the field and nursed you back to health and gains plus one con. It's definitely have more of a con. witch's apprentice kind of a. Uh, well, we could switch it up, I suppose, if we want to go the opposite direction. Let's see. Or you could choose another one if you'd like something else instead. Let's see. The first round was a loss, but you learned a great deal from it. Fantastic swordmaster. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. You found yourself after winning the prize and turned down the reward. The friend to your right helped disguise you and sneak you into the event. I think that's more like it, Cece. What do you think? Yeah, I think that that sounds more like okay. how we would team up. <laughs> yeah. Um, again, we've established that I was kind of friendly with the townsfolk and what have you. And whenever this, you know, we we know the Coliseum is used for hoop and stick an awful lot, but this was much more of a uh, come and press your friends. Um, you know, so uh, in in kind of talking and being like, well, why shouldn't I be allowed to do that? And obviously, Cece, you've got a lot of grandmother issues too. Um, <laughs> we devised this totally kick-ass plan where we're going to put on a fake mustache. Um I'm going to fake a limp and we're going to totally do this. So yes, uh, I'm going to manually alter my roll to a one. And I revealed myself after winning the prize and turned it down because I don't need a reward and I don't need the townsfolk resenting me for taking whatever the reward was. Um, and, and CC helped me uh, with the disguise and to get into the event. Okay. I do have extra cloth lane around. Yes. Oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, All right. So CC gets I did turn one down wins. The- I did turn down your grandfather's cloth armor. I hope that's not a point of contention. Uh, Are you sure? But, <laughs> but all right, so CC, you get plus one wisdom, and I get plus two wisdom, and I get a knack for resilience. 
Yeah, that sounds about right. Yep. Yep, yep. <laughs> All right, very cool. I, I'm, I'm wondering after you revealed yourself, I imagine the reactions were what the reactions were. Yeah, <laughs> Your yeah. father was like, oh, I'm proud of that girl. And your <laughs> grandmother was like, mm. Yeah. She, I wonder, like... Did you right, did so, you beat the old mercenary in the finals? Ooh, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, because th- we've established that I kind of and... yeah, like I had earned it. Just as the men's respect, so I'm I'm guessing that that mostly means my father and maybe Auden enough to train me more. But then when it came time to like, well, you can't enter the tournament though. Like we're all letting you get away with being tomboyish and whatever, but there's no way your grandmother's gonna let you enter a tournament. Like it's it's the scrape knees tournament at this point. Like there's no way we're letting you get into this. And then yeah, we kind of dressed me up, made me look like some foreign uh, contender, and I managed to disarm Auden, you know, and and you know at least get my blade at their neck or something. It was just kind of like, man, damn it, we're really gonna have to start teaching you how to reuse that thing because you're gonna hurt somebody. <laughs> um, so yeah, I th- I think that yeah I think because certainly he would be the boss at the end of that tournament right like he's oh. they hired hand so yeah you i think, think. So. Okay. okay i like that wow that's awesome whip off mustache right, cool. and it is i that yeah we all know we all you <laughs> yeah. weren't fooling yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, all the all the peasants everybody in attendance except yeah, the, your grandmother and maybe yeah, your father yeah. and Auden knew <laughs> it's like, like come on <laughs> yeah who else duh Boo! Cool. (laughs) Actually disappointed. I was actually kind of hoping it was a foreign interloper. Weird. Well, we we needed somebody to replace Odin to fight the dragon. Great, we're in the same situation again. (laughs) Boo! Predictable. Uh, Soup, you want to you want to take us through table six for um, for the traitor? Uh, sure. Uh, so mine is recently you got your hands on some valuable goods. How did you find your wares? The player to your right was there when it happened. Oh, okay. So we actually get to find out how you found your wares. I got a two. Um, so two says smarting, uh, smarting, starting with a small bit of money, you made uh, deal after deal last autumn at the festival until you ended up with a large pile of goods to sell. The friend to your right followed you all day and convinced the Tursus merchant to hear you out and so gains plus one charisma. You uh, like that role or? Uh, yeah, I was kind of reading through the other ones and especially considering Andy's character so far I'm kind of feeling like that one might be the mm-hmm. and kind of like going with the the uh backstory that i've built so far of like i i you know i've been kind of having to squirrel away my allowance to be able to save up for a lot of these things yeah um because i can't like grandmama know that okay. i'm i'm doing this um yeah i think and, that and that it, one and it makes yeah it makes sense you get that skill of haggling which is you know, that's kind of what you've been working towards, right? All, all your, your whole childhood up to this point. I want to be the best haggler, be been, a great trader. Been leading up to this point in the whole life. Okay, cool. Yeah, so Andy gets what? Plus one charisma and you get plus two charisma with the skill of haggling. All right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and I, I think that since uh, Andy's character is, you know, they kind of know everybody doing all of these, you know, menial chores or whatever for them that they would be maybe they knew the merchant and was kind of like bob come on <laughs> come on i muck your stables like let's go yeah, <laughs> yeah. at least here or out <laughs> yeah cool all right andy what about table number six for you okay for the witch's apprentice six. Uh, the witch was hard on you. How did you finally prove yourself to her? Um, ooh, I like this. Uh, you always play- paid close attention when the witch went into the woods, and you learned all of the hidden paths and mystical places there. Uh, the friend to your right has often traveled these paths with you okay. and gains plus one intelligence. Okay. I think that tracks. Yeah, I think that works. And then, I don't know if that's 
following one of those paths on your own or on my own. That's how we each separately perhaps met the dragon. Mm. Mm. Okay. And I get. All right. That's uh, really cool. Yeah. It feels like, are the woods, do the woods have a name? It feels like the woods are starting to play a bit of a central role in a lot of what's happening in the village here. Yeah, now I'm also wondering if I should move the witch's hut to be closer to the woods. Okay. Or we might just need to clone the woods. Oh, put some more woods down there. (laughs) Yeah. We we might just be uh, in a very wooded area. Uh, I did add a building down by the witch's hut. I just thought, like, maybe the cemetery would be near there, and that looked cemetery-ish to me. Oh, okay. So. Um, That was my building from a couple ago, I think. Oh, and you get plus one int, Marty. Okay, got it. I get plus two, and I get entanglements. I do like entanglements. (laughs) As I've learned to fear entanglement. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, I don't know if we want to add. You want me to add more woods so that we can? I was kind of imagining that the woods would kind of do like a like a horseshoe shape around the village. Be like, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, um, nobody can see what I'm doing. (laughs) So I'm just gonna drop a bunch more woods on here. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I think I think you you guys can you know drag it around, do do whatever you want to with it. I think when. My great great grandpa was given this land. Timber became like kind of our number one export, and then we had the lake nearby, so the fishers moved in. And you know, uh, whatever you weave <laughs> had that. Yeah, gotta have a weaver in town. Yeah, That's gotta just... have. But yeah, it just became you know a decent place. We're probably in a rain shadow on the side of the mountain or what have you. So. Mm. You know, it just became a nice place for other people to gather. And my grandfather was pretty easygoing with the rent. So, all right. It's a perfect storm. And thus the <laughs> village of Kirkwall was born. Yes. All right, cool. Well, Marty, do you want to yes. let's, let's finish us up? Let's do this. Let's, uh, all right. So the last mm. one here. One night, you went deeper within, beneath your family's castle than ever before into long-abandoned dungeons, tunnels, and storerooms. What did I find? Uh, D6 here. Um, Hoping for a good one, because I already spent my manual override here. Let's see, a three. Hidden in a box above a rafter, a strange map to a treasure in the north. Uh, Plus two decks and a worn treasure map. What do you think about that? I in a box above a rafter, a strange map to a treasure in the north. Yes, I think that's fine. Let me see. Put down on my equipment here. Treasure map. I think that's interesting. Um, and I think we've, uh, you know, wh- whether there's ever a sequel to this adventure or not, I think uh, we have a bit of wanderlust uh, in at least two of the three of us. Uh, that might lead us northward in the future, or now. That's up to you. But... Does the map have any details on it about what the treasure might be, or where um, it might reside? Oh heavens, no! I, th- it's I just think sort of one of those vague like <laughs> yeah, treasure map yeah. things. Like who knows? Yeah, and to what? Or maybe it does tie into the to the worm, or you know, certainly someone put it above the rafters on purpose. Um, you know, they didn't want us to. You know, it, it was hidden for a reason, right? We just don't know what that reason is. So, uh, yeah, I, I am I am quite good with that. Cool. All right, so there's information, uh, um, Marty, uh, on there about how you fill out the rest of your sheet. And page four uh, of the playbook gives you some reference to fill that all in. So you can do that now or okay. as time allows. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing you're going to have to consider is um, the name for your wild daughter. Yes, yes. And um, there's also a section in traits. You're going to have to think about a trait that you're going to you can want to apply to your wild daughter, okay. which we can talk about at the start of the next time we play. Okay. Okay. Soup. Last right. table. My last table is who is your special helper? Which is an interesting table. Out, outside of Jocelyn? Uh, yeah. Apparently, I have all sorts of friends. 
I got a three. A young woman who is quick on her feet. Hmm. Think about this. You haven't done your uh, your selection yet, have you? I have not. Yeah, I have okay. not done my selection yet. So you could just pick from this table, or you could go with that. Um, I think that I want to change it to yeah. a retired peddler who wants to take to the roads again. Oh, okay. Oh, I got to hear all about the retired peddler. Yeah, so I think that uh, I I think maybe this retired peddler uh, worked with the fisherman mm -hmm. um, and is kind of like Hikadby might have introduced me to them kind of once I made it clear that uh, that this was kind of the path that I felt I was destined to go down. Oh. So um, Cadby's like, I can't come and help you myself. I'm trying to do my fisher thing. And yeah. Like the greatest fisher of all time. But I happen to know this retired peddler who. Yeah. Okay. That they've uh, maybe this retired peddler in the past was, you know, helping the fishermen peddle their wares and now is settled down into Kirkwall. And do we have a name out. for a retired peddler? Uh, let's roll for it. Mm. Is this a male or female retired peddler? I want to do a female because maybe there can be some like tension of like this old retired peddler is like I'm having my my grandma feels like she I'm oh. trying to replace her <laughs> oh, or wow. something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Let's go thirteen. Lucky number thirteen. Oh, so that was Jocelyn, but oh, okay. we're gonna go one forward and we're gonna All say right. that it is Kate. Kate. Uh, Kate the Retired Peddler. It's a good retired peddler name. Okay. And we can probably add Kate to the important NPCs. Yeah. Kate the Retired Peddler to the important NPCs list. Because that's an ally of yours, and Kate's going to be hanging around with you a lot. Heck yeah. And then soup, same thing. Fill out your sheet. Think about the name for your character, and think about what trait you're going to pick. And we can we can address those things next time. All right. All right, Andy. Okay. You're the last one, last table, and then we can finish up for the day. Okay. Where is the witch now? One. Of course. Uh, she still works in the village as she always has. Uh. Plus two intelligence, but I can't go above nineteen in character creation, right? Oh, uh, you, you already did your pick. I too, did, didn't you? yeah. Uh oh, yeah. Uh, okay, but I get some more money and a healing potion. Okay, uh, and the witch is still around, which is and that good. that fits. Yeah, that fits the story. Nothing has happened to the witch recently. She's still around helping the village. No, and that's good. If we if we do indeed want to leave, then I won't feel guilty about leaving if the witch is still there. Oh, very good. And that's it. We've come to the end. Again, Andy, fill out your sheet. Pick a character name. Uh, this was really fun. We've got a village of Kirkwall. We've got some characters to play with. So our next session, next week, we'll actually dive into our first adventure. I'll have a scenario pack that I'll actually be doing random rolls on to figure out what the story is that we'll be playing. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use some of the goodies that you just provided to fill in the blanks on those sheets and make those rolls. So that should be fun. We'll see what we come up with. But you know, we're a couple minutes over. Thank you very much. Do we want to do some quick shout outs? Is that how we roll here on Laughing Dragon? Mm -hmm. I feel like a rookie. <laughs> <laughs> Soup, would you like to do some shout outs? Uh, yeah. So I've been Soup, aka Soupsica, aka CC. Uh, and I do art. Um, you can check out my Twitter and Instagram at Supsica on both of those. Um, yeah, I did things like the overlay that you see before you. Um, so if you want to see great stuff like that, then check me out. I've never felt so pretty in such a great overlay before. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Marty, what do you think? Uh, yeah. Hey, I'm Marty. You're watching us. Click subscribe, ding a bell, like a like dislike it counts as interaction that's fine leave a comment do whatever you feel whatever your conscience tells you actually roll 1d6 do whatever that says <laughs> well done andy 
Uh, yeah, uh, follow us on YouTube and Twitch, as Marty said, on Twitter. All of the info is on this wonderful overlay over in the opposite corner. Awesome. Um, wear your mask, be kind, and we love all of you. Yes, and, and come back next week to learn more about what these fun players are going and characters are going to do and literally to find out what's going to happen to Laughing Dragon. Meta, literally is it it's both yeah oh. <laughs> hey thanks my players Fantastic. thanks everybody appreciate it thank you Garrett. thank you Garrett. thank you yeah thank you you we have to remind Andy to click I'm, a button i'm doing it <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>